Praise the Lord with me, somebody. Praise the Good Shepherd. Praise the True Vine. Praise the Lamb of God without blemish. Praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You are most welcome in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Nkemji Chodo and I am the author of this uh, holiness study book known as Understanding the Doctrines of Strategic Holiness, Volume 1, the Doctrine of Strategic Components of Holiness. The book is available on Amazon and uh, we have included the Amazon uh, a link to the book inside the description box of this video. So have a look at that description box, then uh, you will have uh, the link to the Amazon website of the book and you'll be blessed by the Lord God Almighty. Now we are studying holiness and the question is, why should we study holiness? That is one of the most important questions. This is because holiness has to do with everlasting life. All other things that we study here on earth will pass away. But holiness will not pass away. Because holiness is the qualification to make it to heaven. Holiness is the requirement to make it to heaven. Holiness is the condition to make it to heaven. The Holy Bible clearly teaches so. No one, no Christian, no believer will make it to heaven without living a holy life all the days of his or her life here on earth. So if there is anything to study, if there is any concept to study, if there is any discipline to study, if there is any issue to study here on earth, it is holiness. That is why we are studying holiness. We have 150 holiness unto the Lord revival lectures that we are going to go through. We are in lecture one now. And lecture one has to do with heaven and holiness terminology or terms. We are defining the terms we are going to use during our 150 holiness unto the Lord revival study. It is very important for us to understand these terms because we are going to use them during our 150 holiness unto the Lord revival study. We don't wonder when we use them, then uh, we should be found wanting or we should not understand what we are talking about. For example, if we talk about purity, we should understand what we are talking about. If we talk about sanctification, we should understand what we are talking about. If we talk about consecration, we should understand what we are talking about. If we talk about righteousness, we should understand what we are talking about. If we talk about uprightness, we should understand what we are talking about. If we talk about blamelessness, we should understand what we are talking about. And so on and so forth. That is why we are defining these terms. There are 65 of them. And we have already defined the first 22. We have already defined the first 22 of them, as a matter of fact. So we have defined already the following terms. And keep in mind that each of them has a video that defines it. So each of these terms has a video that we have produced that define the term. So please watch every video that has to do with these definitions so that you will understand them. Why? Because we are going to use them, as I said, during our 150 holiness unto the Lord revival study. So we have defined the following term and each of them has a video that we have produced for the definition. So we have defined one, purity, two, without spot, three, without blemish, four, without wrinkle, five, without fitness, six, love, seven, blood, 
8, cleansing, 9, cleanliness, 10, undefined, 11, spirit, 12, soul, 13, body, 14, mind, 15, heart, 16, consecration, 17, sanctification, 18, righteousness, 19, godliness, 20, uprightness, 21, perfection, 22, wisdom. And now we are going to define prudence. We are going to define prudence. So prudence is the definition 23 or the 23rd definition. But before we define it, I would like us to commit it into the hands of the Lord. So wherever you are, please stand up on your feet or fall down on your knees and begin to cry to the Lord. Pray for yourself. Ask the Lord to reveal to you the meaning of prudence. You cannot live an overcoming and victorious holy life and make it to heaven without being prudent. Prudence is very, very important. Many Christians perish because they are not prudent. Many believers perish and end up in hell because they are not prudent. It is very important for us to be prudent in every area of our life. In every step that we take on the daily basis, cry to the Lord, ask the Lord to give you a revelation of the word prudence in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. Lord, your word clearly teaches that we should be prudent. Lord, as we study this definition, let us understand it and apply it in our life on a daily basis all the days of our life here on earth in the mighty name of lord jesus christ i cover this definition with the blood of lord jesus in the mighty name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen so what is prudence the word prudence means being sensible and careful always i repeat it means being sensible and careful always. It also means common sense and good judgment. It also means common sense and good judgment. In other words, it means avoiding falling into the traps, snakes, Tactics, plots, devices, schemes, or strategy of Satan on a daily basis. I repeat this definition because it's very important. The word prudence means being sensible and careful always. It also means common sense and good judgment in other words it means avoiding falling into the traps snares tactics plots devices schemes or strategy of satan on a daily basis let's have a look at some uh, scriptures one Proverbs 14, verse 8. Proverbs 14, verse 8. I read. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. I read again. I'm reading Proverbs 14, verse 8. I'm reading from the authorized King James Version of the Bible. I read, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. The way in Proverbs 14, 8 that we have just read refers to the way of holiness in Isaiah 35, verse 8. Keep in mind that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself was prudent. We see that in Ephesians 1, 7 to 9. 
Ephesians 1, 7 to 9, clearly teaches that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself was prudent. Examples of prudent believers. Let's have a look at examples of prudent believers. One, David. David was a prudent man. We see that in 1 Samuel 16, 18. 1 Samuel 16, 18 teaches that David was a prudent man. Second Chronicles 2, 12 teaches that David's son, Solomon, was also a man of prudence. David's son, Solomon, was a prudent man. We see that in Second Chronicles 2.12 Sarkios Paulus was also a prudent man. We see that in the Acts of Apostle 13 verse 7 So all these men were prudent. David was a prudent man in 1 Samuel 16.18 Solomon, his son, was a prudent man in 2 Chronicles 2.12 and Cyclos Paulus was a prudent man in Acts 13 verse 7. We are closing now. Let's have a look at two more scriptures before we close. Proverbs 22 verse 3 and Proverbs 27 verse 12. Proverbs 22 verse 3 and Proverbs 27 verse 12 teach the same thing. So we are going to read Proverbs 22 verse 3. I read, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. It is crystal clear. A prudent man foresees evil. And avoid it, but a simple man, a man that is not prudent, goes on and is punished. A prudent woman foresees evil and avoids it, but a simple woman, a woman without prudence, goes on and is punished. May you always foresee evil and avoid it all the days of your life. May you always be prudent. All the days of your life, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians five twenty two. First Thessalonians five twenty two. Abstain from all appearance of evil. That is being prudent. A prudent man abstains from all appearance of evil. A prudent woman abstains from all appearance of evil. A prudent Christian abstains from all appearance of evil. A prudent believer abstains from all appearance of evil. A prudent person abstains from all appearance of evil on a daily basis. Every step of his or her, he or she abstains from all appearance of evil. Every step that he or she takes on a daily basis. That is a prudent man. That is a prudent woman. That is a, a prudent Christian. That is a prudent believer. May you be so all the days of your life. May you always avoid evil. May you always foresee evil and avoid it. May you always abstain from every appearance of evil. Every step of yours on a daily basis, all the days of your life here on earth, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's time for us to pray now. It is very important for you to be prudent. We have seen that being prudent simply means avoiding falling into the tactics, devices, schemes, strategies, plots of Satan on a daily basis. A prudent man or a prudent woman foresees evil and avoids it. But a simple man or a simple woman, a woman without prudence, a man without prudence,
passes on and is destroyed. A prudent man or prudent woman abstains from all affairs of evil. Every step of his or her on a daily basis, all the days of his or her life, begin to pray to the Lord. Open your mouth and begin to pray to the Lord that you will foresee evil and you will avoid it on a daily basis. You will foresee evil and you will avoid it every step that you take on a daily basis. You will abstain from all appearance of evil on a daily basis all the days of your life here on earth in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You will not fall into the tactics, schemes, devices, plots, strategies of Satan all the days of your life here on earth in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this definition of prudence. Lord, we thank you because you have revealed to us that it simply means avoiding falling into the hands of the enemy. Lord Jesus, help us, Lord, to avoid falling into the hands of Satan on a daily basis, Lord. Let us foresee his evil. Let us foresee his tactics. Let us foresee his schemes, his devices against us and avoid them on a daily basis, all the days of our life, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. King of glory, let us, O oh Lord, abstain from all appearance of evil, every step that we take on a daily basis, all the days of our life here on earth, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I give you all the praise, I give you all the honor, I exalt your name and magnify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you have been blessed. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so. So that anytime we post videos, then you will be the, the first to do. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell on your right hand. So that uh, that's the, not uh, the notification bell. So that when we upload videos, then you will watch them. In Jesus' mighty name. Also share this video on all your various social media platform because we want to go to heaven with everybody we don't want anybody to be left behind do so and you'll be richly blessed in the mighty name of our lord and savior jesus christ please don't miss the next definition we are going to define humility in the 24th definition so don't miss that definition see you soon in that definition, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bye-bye for the moment, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.